summary for this page um, exam questions have a tendency to ask you about this where stopping distance equals thinking distance plus breaking distance the factors um, that the thinking and breaking distance depend on the factors that affect the thinking distance the factors that affect the breaking distance and the higher tier answer for the factors that affect the breaking distance so basically this here 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 and here I mean it's, you don't need to know it word for word you just need to know that it's only one or two points in each of the sections what they look for Let's go through the first exam question to see how this area is going to be tested on. So here, if we zoom in, uh, look at the information of the stopping distance for a car. So the stopping distance, you got the thinking distance plus the braking distance combined. So write down two different factors that can increase the thinking distance. So for two marks, um, one mark for each factor listed. So with the aid of the revision guide, the factors that affect the thinking distance, if we zoom in, we can see that if the vehicle is traveling faster, that's one point, or if the driver is ill, or if the driver is extracted or isn't concentrating, if there's poor visibility, you know, things like that. And two out of these four, you know. So returning back to the exam question, we can see that just like that, you'll get two marks. I mean, they could have changed it and asked you instead of thinking distance, they could have asked you about braking distance. And if that's the case, you'll know that you need to mention, you know, the vehicle is traveling faster or there's poor weather, vehicles in poor condition, stuff like that. If you want to be fancy with the higher tier answer, Mass of vehicle is increased, or the friction between the tires and the road is decreased. Braking force applied is decreased. Stuff like that. So, moving on. Uh, look at the information on stopping distance for a car traveling at different speeds. So, as can be seen, the speed is on this column. Thinking distance and braking distance. So, for one mark, you're being asked to calculate the stopping distance at a speed of 8 meters per second. Well, you know the stopping distance is the thinking and braking distance combined, because we are told that here. So basically for 8 meters per second, which is this row here, the stopping distance will be the thinking and braking distance combined, which is 6 plus 7. So the answer here will be 13. So the next question asks you to calculate the thinking time of this driver. So the thinking time is basically from the formula that we learned already, which is here, where speed equals distance over time. So you're being asked to work out time. So therefore what you have to do is divide the distance information given over the speed information given. So if we go back, we can see that we are given the speed and we are given the distance. So therefore it would be six divided by eight to give you the answer, which we know is six divided by eight to give us 0 0.75 seconds. So let's zoom in on the next question on stopping distances. So this question is about force and motion. Look at the information on stopping distance. So as you can see from the diagram, the thinking distance is about 21 meters, breaking distance 75 meters. So you're being asked to write down two things that can increase the thinking distance. So two marks, one mark for each that you list. So basically they're asking you to recall the same area that we've looked at already, uh, which is here, the factors that increase the thinking distance. And you can list any two out of these four. For example, the vehicle is driving too fast or the driver is ill under the influence of alcohol, drugs, poor visibility, stuff like that. So, you know, um, you should commit these points to memory. So carry on, ball tires and poor brakes can increase braking distance. Write down one other factor that can increase braking distance. So for one mark, what affects the braking distance is these guys here. The vehicle is traveling faster, there's poor weather, vehicle is in poor condition, or the mass of the vehicle is increased. Uh, more passengers in the car perhaps. Well, we can't list this one because the question tells you that the bolt, the tires are now bolt, or the braking force applied is not good, or the vehicle is traveling faster. So moving forward to the next stopping distance question. This question is about road safety. Look at the diagram. It shows the stopping distance for a car traveling at 13 meters per second or 30 miles per hour. So as the diagram shows, the thinking distance is 10 meters and the braking distance is 16 meters. So cars travel into the city along a busy road. They travel at 13 meters per second. Uh, one car travels less than 3 meters behind the car in front. This is very dangerous. Explain why. Use the information in the diagram to explain your answer. So for two marks, you got to state two points. And the first obvious point is 3 meters is less than the distance required for the car to come to a stop because the total stopping distance is 26 meters, 10 plus 16, and 3 meters is not enough. So that's one point. The second point is that this will lead to a risk of collision. So if you're too close, you can't brake in time, you're going to crash. So it's a collision risk and there's not enough distance for the car to stop. So that will be enough for the two marks. The question then carries on to ask, when the car goes faster, the thinking distance increases. What will happen to the braking distance when the car goes faster? So for one mark, we know that the braking distance is common sense is going to increase if the car goes faster. And for confirmation, we know this because it's mentioned here. If the vehicle is traveling faster, a faster vehicle has a greater kinetic energy and therefore the braking distance of a vehicle will increase. The next one more question asks, write down one other thing that increases thinking distance. Well, 
We've seen this so many times already. Any one of these four will give you the answer. So this question reads, drivers who have been drinking alcohol are more likely to have accidents. This is because their reaction time and thinking distance have increased. So write down one other factor that can increase thinking distance. So for one mark, um, one other point could be um, there's poor visibility. The driver is distracted or isn't concentrating. Vehicle is traveling faster. So braking distance increases in certain conditions. Write down one factor that increases braking distance. Well, pretty much a repeat question from previous exam questions. Is any one of these or any one of these? And the last exam question for the stopping distance page asks, uh, Claire drives her car carefully. She needs to stop the car quickly. Some factors can increase or decrease her thinking distance. Some factors do not change her thinking distance. Complete the table. The first one is done for you. So this is basically getting you to understand the difference between thinking and braking distance. Okay. So you know thinking is everything to do with the person and braking is to do with the tires or to do with the car. But basically anything that's nothing to do with the person. For worn tires, was well, nothing to do with the person, so thinking distance is unchanged. Answering mobile phone will distract the person, so obviously that will increase. And the higher speed will obviously increase the person's thinking distance, whether he's sober or under influence or not. If you're traveling at a higher speed, your thinking distance will increase. And they then ask you to complete the table for the braking distance, and the worn tires definitely affect the braking distance. Answering mobile phone has nothing to do with the braking distance, unchanged. And higher speed is the factor that actually affects both the braking and the thinking distance, so this increases.